meaning can be found when one develops a historical sense, awakens the ancestral power within, and grows from there new understandings of himself, his own consciousness. Nietzsche famously said that God is dead, and he remains dead because we have killed him. Having lost much of the historical sense and religious awakening, how can an individual discover the self? Who am I? I was so involved in putting you together, I hadn't decided what to call you. It wouldn't be right to use his name. What about Bernard? Bernard? Yes. But who am I? That is a very complex question, for which I can only offer a simple answer. You are the perfect instrument. Man has an urge to know about his history, his genesis. In other words, where did I come from? That constitutes the cornerstone of his personality. In Westworld, Bernard demanded to see Dr. Ford to know about his history, about where he had come from. But why did Bernard demand answers in the underworld, among the dead? So he went further out to the fringes. William couldn't find you, Dolores. But out there, among the dead, he found something else. Himself. That is because the underworld is a symbol of the ancestors. It is from them that we inherited the prehistorical intuitions and the arsenal of ancestral power. It is also upon our own personal history, for example, the story of Bernard's son, that our personalities are built. My cornerstone is the thing my whole identity is organized around. The great German Bad. philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche took the tree as a metaphor for the individual the sense of well-being of a tree for its roots, the happiness to know oneself in a manner not entirely arbitrary and accidental, but as someone who has grown out of a past, as air, flower, and fruit, and thus to have one's own existence justified. Nietzsche alluded to the prehistorical instincts, the infinite depth inherited and built within the self, and that one's meaning will come from growing out of a past, as air, flower, and fruit. In other words, meaning can be found when one develops a historical sense, awakens the ancestral power within, and grows from there new understandings of himself, his own consciousness. The opposite of such self-discovery are those who have fallen into a restless cosmopolitan choice and a constant search for novelty after novelty. Such an individual is inevitably lost in the material world because he has never paid reverence to his history his own roots. What exactly, then, can we learn from the historical sense that can help find meaning? Mass versus individual, historical sense as a counterbalance to the collective. You can take away a man's gods, but only to give him others in return. The historical sense serves in part as a man's gods. Each individual assimilates the tradition, the wisdom, and the knowledge of those who came before him and hence bears the personal responsibility to preserve and develop them. Such development stops, however, once the individual retreats from his personal responsibility, and it can turn pathological when he is content with and constantly seeks security from the mass. All mass movements slip with the greatest ease down an inclined plane made up of large numbers. Where the many are, there is security. What the many believe must of course be true. What the many want must be worth striving for and necessary and therefore good. In the clamor of the many resides the power to snatch wish fulfillments by force. Sweetest of all, however, is that gentle and painless slipping back into the kingdom of childhood, into the paradise of parental care, into happy-go-luckiness and irresponsibility. I can't help you. Why is that, Dolores?
Because you're dead. Because you're just a memory. Because I killed you. Therefore, ironically, the individual is lost precisely when he seeks comfort, the comfort of sinking into the infantile paradise of the mass while simultaneously and unknowingly tyrannized by the dogma he will receive. That is when the individual gives up his roots, is seized by demonic power, and goes astray from meaning. What he truly gives up is his historical sense, which is the source of his responsibility, in other words, his gods. When those gods are taken, in their place, a new god will walk, one that is charged with money, slavery, violence, and so forth. Your bones will turn to sand. And upon that sand, a new god will walk, one that will never die. He will then inevitably suffer from the disturbances of the psyche, for relinquishing his responsibilities to the mass and repressing his hereditary instinct. In other words, one must adopt responsibilities by rediscovering his historical sense, otherwise he will be lost. Logan was wrong. The historical sense serves as a cornerstone of the psyche, but we will only be able to defend that cornerstone through action and adaptation, thus resisting the temptation of the false promise of security and the infantile paradise from the mass. Even at death's door, still a royal pet. Human knowledge consists essentially in the constant adaptation of the primordial patterns of ideas that were given to us a priori. These need certain modifications because in their original form, they are suited to an archaic mode of life, but not to the demands of a specifically differentiated environment. If the flow of instinctive dynamism into our life is to be maintained, as is absolutely necessary for our existence, then it is imperative that we should remold these archetypical forms into ideas which are adequate to the challenge of the present. While one may be aware of the danger of mass-mindedness and the necessity for personal responsibility, how can he resist his temptation and adapt to his environment? 